Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. This is Rickety Games. I'm Sydney, and today we are back with Alone in the Dark. We have just returned from the desert, escaped the pharaohs and the weird bat bug creature things, and we are in the Dersetto Mansion once again, and we are here to complete Chapter 4. So, let's get into it. I see there's a thing right over here. It opens. It has nothing. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> Good start. But uh, here we are, up in the very tip top of our creepy and spooky mansion. We ran into Emily, who was like, what the fuck are you doing? And are you okay? And the answer is no. Uh, we're not okay. Just what this evening needed. Some ambiance. Ambiance fills the noir, sir. That's what it does. Lovecraft entered the chat. Emily thinks we're nuts. And there's a medical bed hanging from the ceiling. Normal. Perfectly normal. We, oh yeah, that's Bart. We have to uh, unlock something. We just got uh, the medicine box key. And as we head down the stairs here, we should actually check out what our narrator lady has to say. Combe never thought he'd be so happy to be back at the Cetto. It felt like he had crawled through a long, dark tunnel of misery and regret. Now that he was back, Combe could look into the steps mentioned in the contract. But there was one thing that gnawed on him. What exactly did this have to do with Dr. Gray? Great question. It looks like in order to find our answers, we're going to have to break into Dr. Gray's office and find out what he knows. So let's hope he's distracted doing something. We are that much closer with our Lang Yaps. We've completed three of them, which is nice. And, uh, oh yeah, we got this sacrificial dagger. A dagger swathed in the grip of two sleek snakes found buried in the sunken temple along with the Dark Man's contract. And we did read a little bit of this contract last time. Surmising Jeremy's fate. So we gotta break in. We gotta break into his office. So we gotta do something that unlocks the puzzle in the clerk's office. Probably to get into Dr. Gray's office and then unbolt it from inside. Um, but let's go to Lottie's room. Because we can get the... Ooh. Need the key. That's rude. Because we can get the medicine cabinet open. And if we can get the medicine cabinet. <sighs> Got to be around here somewhere. He wouldn't leave this house. I don't know what to think anymore. You run into that detective fella. Who is he? Can he be trusted? I think he wanted a good guy. Well, you know, not good. Will he be alright with her coming? Praise the mother. <gasps> He don't need no about all that. Just, him Just calm down. It ain't time yet. God, it hurts. As far as I can tell, Detective Combi seems to be solving problems, not causing them. We're trying. Just be ready in case he starts anything. Damn, at least she's alive. Last time we saw her, she almost got eaten. Thought she was putting on an act for a second, and then it just kept going, so she's actually hurt. So that's kind of scary. The piano. We already checked this room, there wasn't anything, but just in case something new spawned. Yeah, there's the dining room, which is where we came in from. Um, but yeah, good to know that Lottie's alive. Alright, cool. Let's go out! Sound like a growl. No growls, thank you. Ooh. That's not good. The rot that's coming up here. Yeah, it's, uh... Definitely wasn't here before. But yeah, as I was saying, we, before the cutscene happened, we should be able to go to Lottie's room. We should be able to go to- Christ, what the 
hell was that? My god, they don't want me to get this thought out. Ooh, smokes. If we get the medicine bottle, we can complete the the, the puzzle in uh, Cassandra's room. So, let's do that. No? I swear we had the key for it. We must have faith that Jeremy's pact with the Dark Man is a bluff. If we are lucky, our visitors will find him and prove it's all nonsense before night falls. What is true is our attempt to call on her. Too many things have happened for this evening to be in vain. Think of Jack and Cassandra, even Perosi, whose circumstances I can't understand. Grace is our goat without horns. She knows it and will play the role. You must talk to your brother, Batiste. I worry that he will fail us. Mrs. Thompson. Mrs. Thompson. She's a new one. Same thing with Jack? Jack in the dark. Uh, I swear we had this key. We must have lost it somewhere. The Damn. two orderlies still hadn't found Jeremy. Conby figured this was good news. Emily had reminded him about some strange deaths at Deceto, and Conby wasn't sure who he could trust. Well, based on their combo, it doesn't seem like they're out to get him. They're just trying to figure out what he is, but obviously trust no one. Oh, man. I wonder if I had the key and I had to use it in that chapter. And if I, since I moved to the next chapter or like a different area now that I've lost it. Damn. Hmm. Or maybe I'm crazy and I never got it, but I swear we had it. I remember being like excited to be like, oh, we can get back to Lottie's. It's blocked. It's blocked? They locked me in? What the fuck? Well, we got the clerk's office puzzle to do. So I suppose we can do that. They don't murder us. It's not this way, but... Might as well check all the things, since there seems to be new items around. Lunacy in the Astarte Artist Colony. A monograph by Yael Klein. In early 1909, the old Derseto plantation outside of New Orleans was turned into an artist's colony. Three famous European artists rented the house and the surrounding land from the owner, the Ledoux family. The colony was chiefly run by Sebastian Cortez, who was playfully dubbed the captain by his collaborators, William Argus and Heinrich Kassel. The colony existed for six years, until one day all twelve members disappeared without a trace. It is widely believed that their disappearance is connected to the disastrous hurricane that passed through on September 29, 1915, but nothing truly supports this claim. What is known is their frequent participation in New Orleans nightlife, their love for hosting parties, and their elaborate contributions to the Mardi Gras parades as the Pirates of Ponchartrin. Accounts of their lifestyle can be found in almost every gossip column. It can effectively be summed up as carefree <laughs> and bohemian. In late June 1909, the name Astarte first appeared in the newspapers. Cortez said the name came to him as he was painting. There is never any claim to knowing about the ancient Phoenician fertility goddess with the same name before this time. His fellow colonist Heinrich Kassel did know, because he later produced sculptures that show clear references to ancient idols of the goddess. It's impossible to know for sure how this name suddenly made an appearance, but it is interesting because of their Seto's history. Interesting. There's a second page. Even the name Derseto is the Greek name of a Syrian fertility goddess. In the case of naming the plantation, Derseto was certainly not an accident. Hmm. We know that Elia Pickford intended to build a temple for his cult, for he had distributed pamphlets two years prior to the purchase of the land, advertising his intentions. His followers were estimated to be almost a hundred men and women, mostly sailors, maroons, and Cajuns when the plantation was built. To outsiders, Dorsetto registered as an ordinary slave plantation, which enabled Pickford and his flock to remain hidden for decades. 
The official story is that the cult lasted until 1862, when the Union Army came and burned down the plantation and scattered all who lived there. Following the Civil War, new people started to congregate in the ruins of Dorseto to invent a new fertility goddess, the Shub Nigrath. As much as Dorseto is a particular name to have heard of, it's not entirely uncommon among the learned. Astarte is equally known and could have been subconsciously chosen by well-read artists. Shub Nigrath is, on the other hand, very uncommon. Almost impossible that anyone in Louisiana would have heard that name. The name is referenced only in rare books like Udnausprechlichen Kulten and the Necronomicon, and is believed to be a bastardization of Arabic words meaning pertaining to the dark young. The few paragraphs printed on the goddess are so upsetting that no one in their right mind would want to build a religion resting on such qualities. The Shub Nigarath cult was hard to get rid of, but it is believed that despite the police jailing and killing several cultists over the years, the main culprit in the cult's demise is the cult itself, which seems to line up with every instance of cult activity on Darceto's grounds. When Captain J.W. Norton of the Union Army arrived, he described the people at Darceto as malnourished and maniacal. As much as the army tried to save them, they fought back with fervor, as if nothing was going to stop them from slowly destroying themselves. While the disappearance of the Astarte artist colony remains a mystery, the recurring motif seems to suggest that their fate involved lunacy and a hunger for self-sacrifice to that fertility goddess with a thousand names. That ending there, like slowly destroying themselves, definitely leads into like the idea that um, Nyarlathotep causes, right? Despair and torment, mental torment, so that you destroy yourself, right? So if they, if this was the beginnings of this sort of cult around the dark man, then you can definitely see kind of like his influence starting there. Um, but Shub Nigarath is another deity by H.P. Lovecraft, frequently described as the mother goddess um, and associated with the black goat, something like that, um, which would be relevant to the young goat kind of thing that they're hinting to with Grace. So the the more more HP lore is kind of um, creeping in. I mean, it was always there, but like we're they're starting to like explicitly name the the deities, the gods, the old ones. So. Interesting stuff. Whoa, <laughs> was his eyes glowing there for a second? Is he, has he got a little bit of old god in him? Might as well check out stuff over here. We're still missing something in here too. Oh, opera playbill. Another lagniac. The Pirates of Ponchitrain. Nice. Forbidden knowledge is what that unlocks. So it goes. What the heck? We don't have we don't have the key. That's interesting. So they've taken away all of our access. Someone's in there as well. Okay. So it really does pay to kind of go back through everything is what I'm seeing because there's new items in places and they've revoked access to some stuff. So that's very interesting. Got our ye old tree over here. Let's do the loop. The girl, Excuse me, what the fuck? What is that? Are you talking to me? Uh, 
not right now with Starte, goddess, tree, goddess, uh, Shubnagarith, uh, Nyarlahotep. Just stay in the tree, okay? We're good. Holy shit. And it called me by my name. Ugh. Oh, it's dark and stormy. Checking everything out. Nice. There's just something missing in the conservatory. This is still locked, I believe, right? Yeah. Still locked. Alright, we can take the ladder to get up there for some reason, but we can also just go out back through, but if we're missing something in here still... Ooh! Who's on the door? Mrs. Thompson, I understand the last week has been busy. Under these circumstances, I find it important to remind you that Dorsetto's concerns are not a public matter, nor is it something that should upset you. Please continue your excellent work, and don't spend a thought on the death of Perosi, or, more importantly, the suicide of Cassandra Beauregard. They should mean nothing to you or the staff. Uh. I rely on your loyalty, and trust that your close kinship with the Tabois siblings will keep Dersetto's secrets hidden. Okay, their Dr. deaths Gray. shouldn't mean nothing. I know what he's trying to say, but bruh. Interesting. That must have been... Yeah, that was a thing! Yeah, baby! You know what I noticed, too? Um, a lot of our stuff is gone. Like, uh, I had the, um... I was looking for the, the, um, manifest, like, every, with everybody in it. The... I'm forgetting the name for the sheet right now, but... It had all the names of all the patients and people that were here, and it's gone. They're missing things from my inventory. It's really strange. Okay, well, we found everything from the conservatory. So, let's move on back out here. We'll go... Oh wait, I can't, right? Yeah, they locked me out of the plaza, but I can go around. Hang on. This must be what this ladder is here for. Can't lock me out. Damn, they really, like, bolted it there. Can we just knock this shit over? Or? Clearly not. Are somebody okay? I feel like shit's happening around here. It's, it hears, it sounded like I heard someone get murdered. But maybe it was just, uh... Key. Maybe it was just, uh... Wood, wood snapping or something? Something's happening, you guys. This is the clerk's office. This is closer to where we need to go. That's still open. And this is Dr. Gray's office. Well, outside of it. The Flying Dutchman! <gasps> Ooh! Say hi to Will! This should be locked, obviously, because that's his actual office. This is the waiting room to his office. Alright. So there's a puzzle in here. I don't know if we have what it takes to solve it. And there was a safe in here, there too. There's a spare key to Dr. Gray's office in here somewhere. Huh. Or there's a spare key somewhere. Can do. But there was a safe in here. I don't have the combination for this. Maybe Jeremy did. Jeremy? Why would Jeremy have it? Like, wouldn't, like, Grace or one of the other people that, like, spends time here, more time here, they wouldn't they have it? I question nothing. Let's go. So, up to Jeremy's room, then, is my guess. None of you move, okay? It sounds like there's a growl? Ugh. 
Mm, things are changing, you guys. I don't trust it. All right, let's look in Jeremy's room. Oh, my, my mirror. I'm pretty sure we got everything in. Oh, I hold my tongue. To Detective Carnby, <gasps> he wrote a letter to me. Detective Carnby, I'm terribly sorry that my niece has pulled you into this mess. Please, with all my blessings, take her away from this cursed place. I have destroyed that eater of worlds and locked it away in the attic and retreated to a place of hiding. Tell Emily I'm safe. Tell her all the lies you can think of to make her listen. Take her back to Norlands. Sincerely, Jeremy. To Norlands. Oh, man. Jeremy, I don't know we can do that. Also, she's completely on the other side of the world. <laughs> don't even know where this woman is. Alright, she's somewhere in the mansion, man. If I could find her, I'll I'll shake her and try to get her to leave, but she's pretty clever. I don't think she ain't going nowhere, so. Okay, well, this room is uh, empty. No, it's not. It's empty for now, though. Because there's nothing else I can do in here, so. Nope. Like, empty, empty. Means if something will appear later, potentially. Just like Baptiste's room. Trust me. With a fleur de lis. Brother, I need you to trust me. This is the most important moment in our family's history. I know you have doubts and that the terrible Mama Loa told you lies. I would never betray you. I promise. Lottie. Oh boy, the plots are happening. Oh, and hopefully we're not in the middle of it, man. I have a feeling we will be. Batiste's room is done. Let's go into Cassandra's room or Perosi's room. It's Perosi. Perosi's room. Is is her corpse still in? Oh, it's locked. Damn it! Take it away from me. But this is still open. Okay. We're doing the we're doing the run. We're getting our steps in. Got to make sure we found all the stuff and things. We can unbolt this. Yep, that was already unbolted. I think because we came through here, but. Since they're shutting them doors on us, I would like to know why. I don't want to run into the orderlies right now. I'm not sure I can trust them. Guess that's where they went off to. Alright, so we did the big circle on this side. Might as well go to the other side, just to see what we can find. Oh, we gotta keep an eye out for a cutscene. Detective Conby, good to see you again. Hello. Solved your case yet? I'm trying. Hey, Grace, you okay? Oh, she is just peachy, Detective. Are you looking forward to the feast of St. John, Grace? I can't wait. Kids, ain't they great? What exactly are you planning for tonight? Oh, not much. We eat, we drink, we pay tribute to the wishing tree in the conservatory. The usual. Then why all the excitement? There is just something about tonight. Something that's different. I think we all feel it. Besides, we got ourselves some new words for the prayer thanks to your buddy Jeremy. She'll come and turn the world inside out, and things will begin again. <laughs> that sounds strangely threatening. <laughs> Very you much. should come. Look at that mask. <clears throat> oh, God damn it, Grace. Stay put for once. You forgot your thing on the ground, sir. Good riddance. 
Good lord. Is that that thing with the fleur-de-lis on it, maybe? Or oh, it's a key. First floor hall key. Hey, you guys are fucking around. Better hold on to these. Wouldn't want them to get lost. No, definitely not. Oh yeah, and there's that puzzle thing right there. Damn, everybody's creepy tonight. So she was making a mask. I know she was making a mask for Cassandra? Ooh, the rot in the room. To place something there? That seems fucked. Castle? Maybe the mansion? Then the Golden Gate Bridge? Or just a bridge that's red? Sailboat and a tree. Interesting. Jack in the box. We couldn't collect it before. That's kind of interesting. This unlocks forbidden knowledge. What a terrible thing to recognize that your betterment was an illusion. That you are so infatuated by the virtue of struggling that despite all your hard work, you made no real efforts to ever become well. Or that the treatment becomes such an obsession that instead of letting your wounds heal over time, you tear at the flesh in the hope that it will heal better and faster. If only it would bleed in the way you wanted. Do we ever become well? What do you think, Dr. Gray? Ooh. What a terrible thing to recognize that your betterment was an illusion. What kind of place are you run in here, Dr. Gray? I mean, having patience keeps him in business. Ew. It's not right. They took her shit away. <gasps> oh my god. Movie script. Yeah, this was her... What she was working on. Death of the author. She needs some glasses and... I can't tell what that is. Could be a film reel. It's open. Her last page. Jeremy knew that the only one who could help him now was the guest in room number three. The room seemed to have been empty for so long. But that wasn't allowed to be true. Save. The story needed to be different. To include something from the outside. He would bring the guest back to room three and show them what was in that safe. Nine, one, three. But those were not the right numbers. That was the combination for the safe in the clerk's office. Well, thank you for spelling it out for me. Nine, one, three. I was excited to read that. Oh man, this is super fucked. They like completely cleaned her room out. Because we had, we need the last bottle. I don't think I have everything I need. No, we don't. Damn, people are dropping dead, man. I wonder if we get to experience more of their deaths from Emily Hartwood's point of view. Like, I wonder if that becomes a thing. The bathtub is drained. And... Cassandra's room is done. McCarthy was a deadbeat. His mere presence annoyed Conby. It was like watching the worst version of himself mock him by simply being worthless. While Conby enjoyed watching the child outplay the drunkard, there was something terrifyingly familiar about Grace. It was taunting him. Like he was supposed to remember, but couldn't. Hmm. So we got two puzzles over here. Nobody move. Yeah, McCoffee's really creepy, dude. I mean, he seems just like a drunk idiot, but... He's also definitely knows stuff, just like everybody else in this house. They all definitely know kind of 
pieces of what's going on, but maybe not how to stop it, only how to kind of live with it. The safe. Okay, so we're looking at 12. So we gotta go left nine. Then one. And then three. It worked. Yeah, baby. The office key. Snooping galore. Nice. Ooh. The last guest in the empty room suffered from severe maladaption. I must write this down, because if I understand the condition sufficiently, it could make me deny this fact at a later date. And there is reason for me to think I may come to suffer the consequences from this dysfunction, as some who came in contact with the guest seemed to adopt a new world view in which everything was predetermined but broken. Upon accepting this world view, some memories became unmanageable and later rejected. I do not know what this means. I cannot even remember the fate of the guest. I think they were simply misplaced one day and forgotten. Uh, just like all documents pertaining to this guest, they have all been destroyed, or they never existed in the first place. Who wrote this? There has never been a guest in the empty room. Huh. The last writing would Im imply that is a different person the writing the top, but the writing looks the same, just a different ink. Like the cursive. Um, hard to tell though. But if the last guest in the empty room suffered from a severe maladaption that caused them to have amnesia uh, or even short-term memory loss, um, where they're forgetting things, even dementia maybe, um then the person at the bottom could be the same person and just didn't remember that they wrote that. Uh, but the empty room. I wonder which one that is. Does this go to the key or do we want to go from the front? I think here because the front's barred. Dr. Yeah. Gray's office, all to myself. Let's see if we can figure this guy out. Oh yeah, we will. Going around the whole office. We won't unbar it yet just to make sure that we're safe. Let's go in a big circle. Cassandra's things. I have finished tidying up Miss Beauregard's belongings. I will leave it to you to contact her agent and have them collect her things. I found one of Grace's drawings she might want back, along with this key in her room, which I believe you've been looking for. Mrs. Thompson. Mrs. Thompson's very helpful lately. <laughs> Oh, <gasps> France! We found France! And then the last drawing. McCarthy's pirate treasure. McCarthy's. Ooh. This is where McCarthy has hidden my favorite young. It's very important. My favorite young? Is that what you said? Also, what writing? Um... But that goes in the middle of that thing that we found. The damn doors. Ooh, the key! It's to, yes, the stairwell key! Ain't gonna log me out! So rude. Nice to look at things. Jeremy's treatment! <gasps> Dearest Dr. Manzetti, I find myself in a losing battle with my patient. As I've disclosed in my previous letter, his delusions have him completely captured. It's bad enough that he is torturing himself with paranoia, but his madness turns out to be quite persuasive to others, effectively laying the ground for mass delusion. I am writing to you in hope that you can give me some guidance. Beyond my ambition to avoid devastating surgery on my patient, I have grown worried about my own defenses. The words of my patient are deranged, yet they often resonate with something primitive within me. I have tried photographing his brain with x-rays, 
It was surprisingly difficult to get good results. Dark blotches on the plates kept obscuring all details. What? My patient looked at the bad plates and cried out in terror, telling me the dark areas was the shadow of the worm eating him from inside. I could not see anything out of the ordinary. I hope this is a sign that my mind is not as receptive to the madness as I had feared. After further inquiry, my patient described the shadows inside his mind as some kind of chthonic monstrosity that wants to undermine his sanctuary. This is clearly a reference to a place he calls Teroea, a sort of library or convent that works as a psychological haven. With this imaginary haven threatened by this Chthonian, he has now constructed another less pleasant hiding spot. Lately, he has been bringing up a metaphor of a steamboat that has run aground, that he feels like he needs to start the engines and reverse, but he is afraid that the hole in the hull would cause the whole ship to sink. I've been watching him turn this metaphor into reality for the last week. He knows it's made up, but he is doubling down, trying to make it a real memory. I feel certain that this is my chance to break through the barriers of his self-deceit. Hmm, okay. So he's got a new place to go with a steamboat that has run aground. But that confirms that the Taroea library is the mind palace. So it's a it's a safe place. It was a safe place for him uh, until we ruined it, I think. We either drew the dark man in uh, or we let him finally take over by grabbing that book in the middle of the suspended part of it. That's a little dangerous. But the x-rays are interesting. He interpreted it like a Rorschach test um, and saw the darkness coming for him. Also, probably just literally looking at the darkness that's taking over his mind. Duh. Is that everything in the Gray's office? Yes, it is. And what was she saying? Dr. Gray was somehow mixed up in this business with the dark man, Detective Comby decided. He had to be. Either Dr. Gray was using the idea of the dark man to manipulate and torture Jeremy, Ooh. or the dark man was an actual powerful being possessing Jeremy. And in that case, Dr. Gray was simply a stooge. <laughs> Maybe both could be true at once. Combi felt his mind racing in all directions. No matter what, he had to find a way to break the pact. That was what Jeremy said was needed. It didn't even matter what was true or not. If Jeremy wouldn't leave De Seto before the contract was broken, then Combi had to make it happen. He just wished the steps on the contract made a little more sense. <laughs> That's funny. I wish it made sense. The idea that both things could be true is very interesting. It would make sense if, like, there is a evil taking over. Ah! Oh, shit. Uh, well, fuck. Smokes. <laughs> Shit's getting off the handle, man. Jeremy, keep your visions under control, man. That of the madness is coming to us, and it's us. Right? Probably is us. <laughs> Come on, Carnby, keep your shit together. Woo. They're like sudden, you're, it, they do it so well, like you're suddenly being displaced out of nowhere. Oh, like it happens so f abruptly. It's crazy. All right, let's pop France. There's something in. missing. France. A map. A map of the Caribbean. Fancy for the pirates of Pontchartrain. Nice. We're getting close. We need. It looks like Grace's creepy ass mask to complete it. Also, do you see like my mouse like randomly pops up? It's kind of odd. I had it disappear off of Steam, so the Steam wouldn't pick it up, but now it randomly appears when I need to select something. Kind of strange. 
Not a big deal, just funny. All right, let's put the puzzle in. No? Oh, we want to... Pirate treasure. This is where McCarthy has hidden my favorite young. It's very important. My favorite young, it's very important. It's just a room. Pirate treasure, maybe his room? I did see that it was an objective on our list to go find uh, her treasure, but I thought we could use the drawing. Uh, maybe his room? Where is his room? You know, we haven't seen his room, have we? Ah, there it is. Aha! So we can get into that area we couldn't before. Ah, oh, sick. Okay, then let's go there. Okay. Never mind. I was gonna say... I didn't know where his room was, but it's clearly down here. Now that we've got the uh, the floor one hallway key. Sick. Because I would guess that the treasure map refers to his room since his name is on it. Yeah, baby. No. no. Oh! The dark man! Can I move? Can I go? Bro! Well, that's super fucked. I'm assuming he's gonna chase me. You good? We good? Is there even a way out from one of these sides? Yeah, the mezzanine. Is he gonna come after me? He didn't chase me. I feel like if I open the door, though, he's gonna fucking walk right out. Was he just a vision? Just to spook me? Let's hope not. Surprisingly neat. Maybe I've been selling that old barfly short. <laughs> he really does not like him. Close the door. Ugh. I swear, if he traps me in here. Random crab. Thank you. Slowly creepy. That weird breathing is back again. Aha! The grate. Looks like McCarthy has something hidden inside. That's the treasure. How can we get it, though? Moment of clarity. Sometimes. I think this place makes me worse. That Dossetto might be my grave. A coffin made of ostentatious architecture. A Taj Mahal for the drunken depressed. There's something about Dossetto. Something about Dr. Gray. Like we all pretend that we're here to get better. When in fact we are here to be forgotten. Ooh. This guy, you know, is tortured. I mean, he was the one who checked himself in because he was... He wanted a rest, I think is what he said. He wanted to sleep. But, I mean, obviously there's something way more. I mean, you don't drink just for giggles. Not like the way that he does. He's drinking to forget something. Take some shotgun shells. That's a bit concerning in his room. But I think that's just the game. So how do we get this out? Looks like McCarthy has something hidden inside. Oh, looks like we need, like, a screwdriver. Yeah. Alright. Well, that's a thing. No dark men. In the hallways. No pharaohs. We're good. And then this is Ruth's room. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Photography, some stuff. Mm, oh, some bullets. She's got machine guns. Damn. 
Ruth is packing. Got a camera right there. A little fan. She's got some fancy shit. Is that a hookah? Oh my god. Damn, Ruth is, uh... She wants to party. She fucking meant party. Nothing else to pick up in here, though? What is she playing? Solitaire? Mm, yeah, maybe. Still something in here, though. So maybe we have to come back in here later. Because I got nothing. Alright. We go to... <gasps> the empty room! Oh, this is the empty room. Oh god, he's gonna be in there or something. Did that just open? It's locked, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, the fact that it opened for me is fucked. Okay, I'll go in. What is this? All set up for the St. John's banquet? I can't take this much more. This has to end. Isn't this kind of where we came out? Like that was the elevator or like pretended to be and then we met Ruth here at the end. But this is like the real version of it. I'm gonna take the money. Why? Oh, a drink. A jangling shaker. For... You can't really see it, but it says the, a goat without horns. The last one. There, you can see it right there. Goat without horns. Secret objective. So it looks like I need like a like a Blair Witch type of thing is the last thing. Oh. Nice. Empty. Anything on the tables here? Piano, we're gonna sing. Do some poetry. Oh. Nothing in there. I wonder if some of the stuff that's like empty, if it's meant for Emily Hartwood, we can just open it, but can't do anything with it. Aha, then back to the staircase. Nice. And we found everything in the grand parlor. Nice. And then this is, ooh. That was creepy. This is for the stairwell that we couldn't get to before. Nice. So now we can go all the way down. Very creepy, what the fuck? Is there like blood and shit too? Does that lead to the sewers? That's, that's not right, right there. Yeah, I don't even want to stand on it. Oh god, we're in the basement. Oh fuck, this is the medical wing. <gasps> oh, ew. Oh, this is not gonna be good. This is gonna be creepy as fuck. Scapegoat. Unspeakable cults. And there's my mouse again. Children of a dark sun, and then we need something in a sack? Hmm. Interesting. Creepy. Locked, of course. Naturally. Ooh. Torturing him? That was in Dark Young. Radiography. <laughs> Patient totally... Jeremy Hartwood. Date June 14, 1930. Is this where we can find his x rays? Jeremy's skull proved difficult to capture properly. Partial radiographs worked best. A complete picture of the brain can be assembled by piecing three plates together. Observations. 
even when looking at an assembled version, a shadow covers significant parts of Jeremy's brain. Possible tumor, but more likely that the equipment is failing. Jeremy reacted strongly to the pictures and claimed to see a giant clay worm eating and displacing his memories. Notes. While this exercise has left me nowhere closer to an answer, I feel confident that a Burkhart lobotomy should sever all necessary parts. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, just, 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 uh, give him some sunglasses after. So, Baptiste and Lottie are torturing Jeremy? Or interrogating him? Hypothetical psychosurgery based on the ideas by Burkhart and the St. Petersburg research could end up saving Jeremy's mind. Severing the connections around the frontal lobe would certainly solve most mental afflictions. The procedure would be brutal in performance, as well as in efficiency. An ice pick pushed through the edge of the eye and into the skull would untether the nerves like Alexander cutting the Gordian knot. <laughs> As this would likely leave Jeremy in a very different condition, all other paths should first be explored. The medical instrument I would need for this lobotomy is missing and I should have Waits order a new one. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah, it's straight through the... Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. I like that we hear the torture between the notes of the doctor notes. So we gotta find his, uh... It's dark as fuck. We gotta find his, uh... His stuff. I can see the little dots so, like, it makes it easy to, like, go towards stuff. So that's one. Nice. Partial capture of the brain grimmed by unsettling darkness. Damn, they are going to town with interrogation. <gasps> Surgery room. Is that where they are? That's fucked. Should I take these? Shevnograth, the black goat. Ah, oh, there it is. Black goat of the woods with a thousand young. I was gonna say a thousand young kind of strike me something interesting. Damn, should I go over there and save him? Electrical fuse. The spare fuse can help regulate electrical power when inserted into a fuse box. Do I need this in here? Oh. So that did work. But we need another one, it looks like. A second one. So how did they get Jeremy out of wherever he was hiding? They must have found him. A thousand young! Not the surgery room. Yeah. Turn on electricity first. That was random. Oh my god, what? It's a radio? I do. Whoa, it was from the dictaphone. So that was in the past then. No wonder it kept looping. Extra creepy. Ugh. Some dictaphone recording, man. So we can go in here. And we need one more drawing, I think? Aha. Uh 
Boom, baby. That's better. A little bit. So that's. Do we have to be. Oh, we have to piece it together? There we go. I think that's it. Yeah. Ew, what the fuck? <gasps> His darkness. Like, literally? A broken piece of burned clay. Its size suggests being a part of a statue. Ew. So we got it. And we gotta assemble it with something else? Do we want to assemble a piece of darkness or something else? We don't have the keys to any of these other doors. That's wild. Find the rest of Jeremy's statuette. Huh. Dr. Gray had been putting Jeremy through some thorough medical investigation. He was trying to break through Jeremy's stories and get to some truth. Just like Combi was. Could Dr. Gray have been trying to break the contract as well? That's a possibility. But I feel like that is mutually exclusive of... Um... Him trying to use the darkness on Jeremy. So the rest of these places need a key. So... Even that's locked again. Damn. The surgery room already locked again. All right. Well, there's nothing else we can do here then. So we need to find a fuse as well. Damn! What the heck? Locked out of everything all of a sudden. It's kind of wild. Oh, that's a little different. Uh oh. Oh, that was rude. Oh no. Why does this keep happening? What am I supposed to do? Oh, uh, run, I think it looks like. Before we drown? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Go, Carnby, go! Shit. Oh, my God. What the heck am I supposed to do? There we go. Go before you drown, bro! The madness is rubbing off on us. Holy smokes. Oh. Is that an invitation? Ah! Go, go, go! Is there anything? Nope, there's nothing. Go, go, go. Whoa, we're fine again. Holy smokes. So Miss Thompson said she found Cassandra's drawing and a key. We found the key and the drawing, but it's not the, the drawing that we need. And we need a screwdriver to be able to unlock um, the vent in McCarthy's room. Hmm. Maybe let's go to some of the other rooms that are red, and maybe we'll find a screwdriver there. Like, I'm thinking, like, maybe the wash closet, or even the cellar, maybe? Somewhere weird, you know? Because we still can't get to this. Oh. 
Oh. This is my room. Your I room? Belong here. What kind of Shutter Island shit is that? Oh lord. Dressetto's getting to him. Are we the third guest? Yeah, we didn't get to come in here, did we? Ashes of an- Oh, <gasps> that's the other thing! Forbidden knowledge for unspeakable cults. Whoa. Derceto stands on a breeding ground for the grotesque. A temple devoted to rebellious growth. The most ugly and cancerous side of nature. You may be able to shield your psyche for a while. But rest assured, your soul will come to pray to that hideous god in time. That is the story of every man and woman who gather around that ancient arbor. The tree. They all croak, bark, and bleat because their own bodies are afraid and they wish to repel the evil those words conjure. Ia! Ia! Instead of that blasphemous name, they gossip in hush whispers the name of their seto, Astarte, and the black goat of the woods. So that tree is some of the source of that evil? Ooh! I recognize this view. Uh-oh. Where'd I know the combination. I carry it with me. We do? What's the combination then? I want to say if he carries it with me, like maybe 196 or 692. Six nine two. Ooh, I guess that shit. I, I did the first one first, and it didn't do anything in the second half of the letter. But if he carries it with him, Picayune, an old coin from the time when Louisiana was a Spanish colony. Very cool. Look for the girl, Detective Carnby. Detective, I have made many discoveries in my case. The child we want is safe, thanks to good people like me and you. We're so similar, but you don't see all the things I do. To find your man, Jeremy, you also need to look for the girl. It has always been that way. The young deliver us all. You should have a look in my room. There's a piece of the puzzle you will need. Take care now. My coffee. Weird. So, is that mean something's in that room now? Like a screwdriver? How long have I been here? Yeah, that's fucked. We're totally getting sucked up in the madness. I can't believe I did it. You should come. I can't believe I didn't recognize you. Is any of this real? Hey, that's my badge! Hey! That would have been helpful. I know that number. Where's that from? My badge. I did this. I wrote that. Damn, did this get into Shutter Island? Yeah, 196692-LA. Oh. Ooh, is he a patient and this whole thing is happening because of the darkness? Are him and McCoffrey, Coffrey the same person? I can never say that dude's name right. I always want to say McCoffrey, but it's McCarthy with an R. Oh, fuck. This is Ruth's room. I don't think there's anything we need in there anymore. And then McCarthy's room. Let's see if there's anything new. Doesn't look like it. Who's 
like McCarthy has something hidden inside. <gasps> oh, the coin. That's right. We could use it. There you go. Hell yeah. The missing picture. <laughs> Ew. Yeah, that's pleasant for a kid to draw. Why would McCarthy lock this up? Was he trying to keep Grace from completing the shank? Yeah. If so, couldn't you have just made another drawing? Yeah, but this one's the possessed drawing, though, don't you know? You know what I mean? All right, let's go pop the... Ooh, shit! Oh, yeah. That's... Not good. Everything's fucked. Yep, everything's fucked. Okay. What the hell happened in here? Yeah, for real, what the fuck? Oh. Oh, yeah, that's... That's something. Got another shovel here. Ho oh, ho ho. This looks like the 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 prologue. Whoa! I got a Nazi and I'm not afraid to use it. Nice. He gave me some shotgun shells. Or I picked them up. Not the bear. Oh, this is the prologue. Cause Grace jumps over and she uses the bear to get to the thing. Ew, what is that noise? Oh my fuck. They're bats. They're bat bugs. The mm, no. I do not want to wake them all up. Oh my god, they're everywhere. You're gonna wake up! Oh shit, oh shit. Oh shit, it's a brawl. It's a brawl, baby. Where are you? Yeah, that's better. Where you at, buddy? Oh, get off of me! Get off of me! Did he just suck my blood? Here we go, got him. Okay, I get why they gave me so many of these now. That makes more sense. Holy smokes. Could have done that and ran away from the bats. Probably. Let's get my arm swings in. Grace, goddammit! We have to arrange them, right? Probably according to the goo. Oh yeah. This will be the last one. There we go. Uh oh. We're going on our own again. The lamp. I recognize it, but I don't. Okay, we're gonna have to find that. Okay, thank you. This is different. Was that her room? It was her room, wasn't it? I think it was. Oh, good. Still better with the light. Oh, no, I'm kind of adjusted now. 
Oh, it's weird. This seems like an older history of the building. <gasps> Not a... What the heck? This looks familiar. Is this our office? How am I back at the office? Jeremy's never been here. It's our memories, too. They're starting to flood together. Is there anything else before we... No, I don't think so. No. Just checking. Let me in! Oh, so we're adding to the madness. A writing desk key. I'll take that. That's me. Isn't it? How long have it been since I drowned myself in drink and depression? And it all felt so peaceful, slipping away into oblivion. A welcoming dark voice wrapped around my mind like a heavy blanket. It turned off suddenly as I woke up from the sound of my office door closing shut. A messenger had left a telegram from Mrs. Saunders. She had a lead on where to find her husband and her kidnapped daughter. There's the telegram. Telegram from Gabriella Saunders sent December 25th, 1928. My husband returned to steal one of our most valuable paintings. I'm sure he meant to sell it. If you hurry, I'm sure you can track him down. That's what this says. Was Gabriella the name of Grace's mother? I don't remember. God, I used to drink so much back then. When was this exactly? What case was I working? Is that another piece of darkness? Oh no, okay. I'm jumping ahead of myself. A crumbled newspaper clipping from December 23rd, 1928. Philanthropist Teddy Saunders goes mad and kidnaps child. <gasps> I think that's the name of Grace's parents. Maybe that's why he thinks she's so familiar, because he never found her before. I don't I I, I wish I had that list, um that patient list that we had, because then I would remember better. Ah. Oh. We're piecing it together. Looks like we're missing two more things. One one more thing. Oh, there's one more item. Photograph of a man. This goes on the board for sure. Is that all of them? Mr. Saunders, Mrs. Saunders says her husband stole the painting and it means to sell it. Little toy shop burglarized. Yeah, we want to turn that over. I Check out Thornhill. Case. Some kid got taken by her father, headed out of state. But he had made a mistake by selling a painting that his wife actually cared about to a collector named Thornhill to fund his venture. That's how I tracked him down. At least I think so. Oh, that's one hell of a wire. I guess we're following the the red string. Conspiracies galore. Where's the wall? Where's the meme? Oh my god, look, it's just floating around up there. Interesting. Oh, we're back in the city. Nice. What the heck? Was that Molotov? Can't shoot you guys for coins. Wow. I know we can't go this way, but I can't go that way. I know, but there's things. See bullets. It's getting real. Oh. Did I track him down? I'm following my own footsteps. This is Thornhill's fine art gallery. Oh, yeah. Look at my history right here. Thornhill wasn't a bad man, but he had principles keeping him from handing out information on the fields. So he needed some convincing. Break in. Ooh. Well, every case can't be squeaky clean.
That's a painting. <laughs> Shotgun shells in the register, that's funny. Alright, we're going up. Oh, we found it. Take that. We're full up on drinks now. Mr. Saunders had sold a valuable painting to Thornton, hoping the money would carry him to wherever he was going. The painting, now leaning on an easel in Thornhill's bedroom, had a certain mesmerizing gloom that seemed to call out to me, telling me I was needed for something important. Hmm. I felt myself falling into the painting, only being brought back by Thornhill thrusting an address to a Hotel St. George into my hand and asking me to get the hell out. He seems really susceptible to darkness because we saw that painting. I remember this at all. But I can't say it didn't happen. Drinking too much. Ooh! Whoa, smokes. Something else coming? We're good? Yikes. Alright. Cause like uh what I was uh, what was I saying? He fell into Jeremy's portrait when we when we first saw it, so he seems to be really drawn. Why to sneak? Drawn to darkness. Which makes sense to I me. Mean, he's a noir detective. Oh, fuck. Oh, yeah, there's a bunch of them. He's... He's not into the... the mysteries and the violence and the dark city and the night. For giggles, you know what I mean? I don't know if my light disturbs them. Hopefully not. I'm gonna go this way. Oh fuck. He's distracted by that. And then I'll follow the way this guy went because he's gonna do a little loop de loop. Ooh, unless I need to go over there. I don't know where I'm going, but holy shit. I can't go that way. Uh ah. Damn. over here for giggles then. Oh, there's bullets in the trash can probably. They're hopefully both attracted to that. Just go, just go, just go. Yeah, you go. Ooh, 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 ooh. We walk so slow and we sneak. Oh man, he's gonna be right up on my ass. Yep. Okay. We're doing good. We're almost in the train. We start it? Yeah, we do. No, close that shit, close that shit. I think we're safe, but I'm still gonna sneak just to be sure. We're following our little string here. They're right outside too. I don't think the dinky little door is gonna stop them. Ooh. Okay, Hotel George, oh it's over there. I see it. See the lights up there? Hotel St. George. Nice. Okay, I think we're okay to walk around. <laughs> I 
What is the achievement if we ding all the bells? It must be something. What is that? Candelabra? A weapon. Oh, hell yeah. Who did it? Mr. Carnby with the candlestick. In the library. Mm, worth a try. Seems too big a cart to just break. But maybe we come up here? Oh boy. Creatures? No creatures? Alan Wake? Hanging out? Alice's photos? Anybody? Might as well drink one, take one, you know? What does it say? Jean Lafitte. Je suis une mère, un monstre de marine. <gasps> oh, shit. On my way to the hotel, the woman getting caught up. I owe the money. A lot of it. I can't remember what for. Probably some dumb gambling debt growing in size for each payment missed. I punched one of them out, and I sent the others packing. It was a stupid one. They'd be back. They're back. I thought I heard something. Well, that's not good. Machine gun cartridge. I haven't even used it that much. We're just stockpiling the stuff. Rumples like that. Ew. What's with the music? What did I cause? Is there more? Oh, there's more. Shit. That's what I caused. <laughs> Yick. It was a bit dramatic for all that. I saw you, Remy. You ran, but I saw you. Nice. Pistol bullets made up for all the bullets. Hell yeah. Just for giggles, checking it out. The bells. Oh, a napkin. I thought we were going for the drink. <laughs> All the world's a stage. It says a secret objective. So we need what a tire or something, and then a box. Mm -hmm. Interesting. A lot of things. Bell. Hotel bill. A hotel bill dated December 21st to the 25th, uh, 1928. 
Single room dinner telegram. Mr. Ted Stryker? Room number 307. Interesting. Ooh, machine gun cartridge. We're just stockpiling it all. Am I full up on shotgun shells? That's depressing. Not when I do that, though. Nice. I found it. In the hotel ledger, I recognized the handwriting of the signature. Ted Strike. It was him. I could feel it. It was the kidnapper I was hunting. I put on my knuckles and hurried up to his room. Alright, let's put on our knuckles. How interesting. Something about that name, Ted Stryker, rings a bell. Feels Dink vaguely familiar. Dinky Bell? Did Ted Stryker get striked? He was in 307, so we're going up. Every place crumbles. <laughs> 301. Did I just read that number wrong? Three oh one. Ah, I saw the little curly top of it is a seven. Three oh one. What a room! I recognize this room, but I didn't catch up with them here. I must have followed them, but where? Business card. Thornhill's. David Thornhill's business card. The map. What's this on the floor? Telephone directory. DeWitt. Oh, call Booker. Page torn from the telephone directory of business. DeWitt Boarding School, 1975, Tallahassee, Florida. Oh boy. $350 for the Kingsport painting. DeWitt contact Mrs. Robin, $300 a year. That's right, he was running away, ditching his old life and marriage in New Orleans to find something better in Tallahassee. And he took his daughter with him against the will of the mother. That's why she hired me. But I stopped him. I caught up with him at the Pearl River Bridge. Yeah, we did. Fuck yeah. Memory for the win. Interesting. I wonder why we're following this particular. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. The Pearl Bridge. Wait, that's the bridge. That's the drawing in the bridge. It is Grace. We saved her from being kidnapped by her father. Oh, these are all of the drawings. So that room. And the all of her drawings that they, they they're these locations, and that's why we're doing this. Pearl River. This is where I caught up with them. This is what the dark man wanted me to revisit. But I'm still not seeing it. What am I forgetting? Cause he keeps saying Grace is familiar. I bet it's Grace. I might be barking up the completely wrong tree, but I bet it's her. I'll take that. Use a hatchet back. Another red bridge, right? Ooh. These are all of her drawings. Looks like this is not the way they want us to go. What 
was the other road? Oh. Yes, I knew it. Rip finding stuff. But I found the story. I can't believe I didn't recognize it. I looked a little different back then, I suppose. Was any of this real? How do you mean? This day just... So much is happening. I can't... I think I've lost my head. Do you need me to apologize? I mean... I am sorry. I don't think I need to begin to explain. You, you're just a kid, Grace. I'm really sorry. I didn't mean for it to happen. Lies. More lies. No, really. I thought I was being a good guy by handing you over to your mother. I didn't know. I, I couldn't have known that she wouldn't care about you. I don't know how this works. What is this for? Some form of admission of guilt. Maybe acceptance. It's what the dark man wants. I guess we just watch my father die again, then. You think he's alive? I know he is. He's down there, scared that he won't be able to get out. That he will drown with his daughter again. What are you saying? We gotta save him! We? Do it yourself. I'm down there with him, remember? Undo the past. But how? Can I really save them? This all happened so long ago. I have to find a way to get down there. I have to see it with my own eyes. He used to see what he condemned them to. There was a boat to. at the house where I entered. If I can raise the bridge, I should be able to get to the car. We know Grace survives, so maybe he dives in to save her. There must be a way to save you both, right? Why else would I be here? Maybe the dark man just likes it when you suffer. Yep. Maybe this is why he stopped drinking as much. Um, because he thought he was doing right and he did wrong. And this is like the moment of his like most painful memory. And that's why he blocked it out. That's why he didn't remember who she was. Don't worry, kid. I'll think of something. I'm not holding my breath. Could he really need to undo the past though? I think I need to go the other way. Oh. Step here for giggles. Whoa. This is crazy. I don't know where to go, there's so many paths. Full of shotgun shells and drinks. And health. Ooh. This must be where the bridge is operated. Nothing's happening. It's like something's holding it back. Oh. That got fucked really fast. <laughs> There's something satisfying about shooting them out of the air. They did give me all the hatchets, though. Oh no, I'm stuck again. Oh, I saved it, yes! Woo! I got stuck! 
Oh, the other side, the other side. Get me in here. Ooh. Come on in here. Shit. Ooh, get off of me. Why didn't you hit him? Nice. Kill all of them. Nice. Where's the bridge? Go down, I think. Go down. Damn, they're, they're screechy little guys, aren't they? Going down. What was that? the glitches let's hope there's a crazy audio glitch why not yeah bitch taken out Okay. So what was this? Pilot something. Maybe this way? Oh yeah. I'm trying to get to the car. <coughs> Anything this way? Dead bat. What the heck? Who's hissing at me? Get out of here. Okay, so I think it's the same path. We're going, we're going. If Bucky wants to take a bite, he can come after me, but I think he's gonna leave. Ooh, look at this. Oh, <gasps> it's a thing! A goat without horns. We completed it. Edward had heard the whispers for years. When he lived in Brooklyn, it was only on rare occasions. Like when he, as a child, climbed that tall tree in Central Park. 
or when he almost drowned in the Hudson River, trying to save his despaired mother. The whispers became more common as he moved to New Orleans, but still rare enough to be ignored. Now as he walks the halls of Tarseto, he knows what is calling him. He doesn't want to admit it, but the dark young in the conservatory is telling him to sacrifice the Cabri Sancorn. Cabri Sancorn. Interesting. So everybody... Oh, I didn't mean it! You dead? Good. My thing's gonna break. Woo! That was an extra thing. Fuck yeah, though! This is why I don't want to miss stuff. <laughs> Goodbye. Alright, this way. Ho ho ho! We got the secret objective! With the dead guys. Obviously, we can't go this way. Okay, sweet! I'm so happy about that. Take a chill pill. Yeah, fine. So we went that way. Nice! This should be the way we need to go. Oh yeah, there's the little boat. That's what we need. Little boat! Alright, we go! I wonder if we can actually change the past. I doubt it. I think he just wants you to try so that you'll suffer more. Is she gone, or is she still there? She's gone. She's in the car now. Depths of despair in the bathroom. Oh my God, Carnby, are you okay? Don't leave me alone. What the hell have you been doing? What's going on here? Look at this mess. I, I, I'm sorry, Mrs. Thompson. Don't make me kick you out of this house. Oh, yeah. Now get out. She's the, the. That's right. I don't know why I forgot about her. Poor dude. Hey. Detective, Mr. Carnby, I'm really worried about you. I'm okay. I just need to catch my breath for a moment. He's covered in blood. <coughs> this place? That's not. It's called the darkness. There are some very disturbed figures around here, and I don't think it's just the patients. I've been reading some things about how Dorsetto has a deranging effect on people. I think it might explain things. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Just take it easy, okay? I'm gonna go find a way into Dr. Gray's apartment. I want to know what he's hiding. Don't leave us alone! Emily, don't worry. I think I'm close. I'm gonna set everything right. Just be careful. He said don't leave me alone! She left us alone in the dark! And sadly, I have to leave Mr. Carnby alone for this episode as well, because we are so close to a case closed. It's going to be super awesome, you guys. I powered through to finish both chapters 4 and 5, and 5 is really, really short. So I think it's better if I leave our little cliffhanger here, and then we'll continue with the rest of part 4 and part 5 in the next and final conclusion for Mr. Edward Carnby's story. It's getting so, so good, and there's so much interesting things kind of coming into frame and they're starting to give you kind of different perspectives on like how this is turning out like the idea that dr gray could both be helping and hindering with jeremy's condition and the madness that's overtaking uh edward carnby himself is really fascinating i'm very excited to uh follow the rest of the clues and find the conclusions that we need to so if you guys are ready for the finale of Alone in the Dark, and with Mr. Edward Carnby's side of the story at least, check out this episode over here. And if you guys are interested in seeing something else on the channel, something maybe spooky, check out this video too. 
Grab your drink of choice. Go out into the night and venture with your fedoras, because our conclusion to our mystery is afoot. Bye.